Thank you for tuning in to HR Revivals. So it's the hour for revival. I'm your brother in the Lord, Brother HR. It's always the hour for revival. Glory, hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. Father, hide me behind the cross. It'll be none of me, but all of you. Speed of these up to clay. And if I leave here singing, I got just what I wanted and more from the Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Glory, hallelujah, Lord. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Today's message is entitled, Stop Sitting in the Sin You're In. Stop Sitting in the Sin That You Are In. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And I'm at my, I'm in my new location for HR Revival, so I hope the signal is coming through quite clear in Jesus' name. Glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. If you got your Bibles, please turn with me to the book of Psalms. We'll start out with Psalms 1 and 1 through 3. Psalms 1, 1 through 3. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Psalms 1, 1 through 3. How happy is the one who does not walk in the advice of the wicked or stands in the pathway with the sinners or sits in the company of mockers. Instead, he delights in the Lord's instructions, verse 2, and he meditates on them day and night. They're always before him. He's always thinking about the Word of God. Verse 4, verse 3, he is like a tree planted beside flowing streams that bears its fruit in its season and whose leaf does not wither. Whatever he does prospers. Whatever he does prospers. Good morning, Brother T.D. Moore. God bless you. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. Please share this message, everybody. Thank you, Jesus. Bless you, God. So what am I saying this morning? It's time we stop sitting in the sin that we're in. It's time we stop enjoying the sin that we're in in this world today because we're in the world, but we shouldn't be of the world. People say all the time, Oh, I sin all the time, brother. I sin every day. <coughs> the Bible says we all have sin. That's past tense. And falling short of the glory of God. Don't let anybody condemn you for where you used to walk. And where you used to sit. And who you used to sit with. Don't let them condemn you. Thank you, Jesus. For who you used to sit with. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. Don't let them condemn you. Because of who you used to be sitting around. Because the very ones who condemn you now are the very ones you used to sit with. Thank you, Jesus. But you know what? Jesus sat with the lower class of people. He said, these are my kind of folk. These are the ones I'm out there to reach. You know what? We, 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 I'm so sick of how the church has been acting, how they stub their religious nose up at people who need the hand of God to touch their life and to change their life. I love what Leonard Ravenhill said. He said, show me your prayer life by showing me the people you're around and I can tell you what kind of man of God you are. That's what Leonard Ravenhill said. Thank you, Jesus. He said, if I can observe the people you're sitting beside, I'll be able to observe your prayer life and tell you exactly what your life is like. Leonard Ravenhill said that. But you know what? There's a lot of people sitting out there today, and they're, 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 they're uh, judging those who have been sitting in the wrong kind of seats. Instead of trying to help them, they're playing musical chairs, running around them, getting out of their seat long enough, running around and sitting back down in their musical chairs of sin. 
acting like nothing more than glorified hypocrites. Thank you, Jesus. And judging those that they should be loving. Thank you, Jesus. But sometimes you've got to change your position to change what you're seeing. You've got to change your position to change what you're seeing because if you look the right way, the way God's trying to show you to look at it, then truly you will see from a godly point of view. Thank you, Jesus. You got to change your position on some things. Got to quit looking at things the way you used to look at them. And believe God for better things. Thank you, Jesus. I changed the position of where I was sitting. I was sitting at the wrong table at one time thinking nobody would ever love me or want me. And God sent me a beautiful woman with a beautiful family that loves me. I'm glad to have a family now. Thank you, Jesus. Not only did he bless me with the woman and the family, the other children, God blessed me with a home for them. Because I changed my position of thinking. I kept saying, I'm never going to get out of that bad situation up there at the house that I used to live at. I ain't never going to get out of there. So I kept saying. I kept myself in Egypt too long. I did. I kept myself in Egypt too long because I was not willing to change my position on what I was seeing until I changed the position of where I was seated. I was never going nowhere. I would have died in that old place by myself if God would have not told me to change position. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I'm so glad He told me to change position. Thank you, Jesus. I just got to brag on Holy Spirit this morning. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Look what the Lord has done. Thank you, Jesus. Glory. Hallelujah. Luke 16 and 21. Oh, wait, wait. Sometimes you got to change your position of what, where you're sitting to change what you're seeing because those who are around you will affect what's happening in you. Matthew 15, 11, he said, It's not that which comes into a man that defileth the body, but what there goeth out of the man's mouth that defileth him. Then the disciples came to Jesus and said, You know, they got offended. The priests got offended when you said that. Good. There is an offense in the gospel. The gospel will offend the right people that are living wrong. That are supposed to be living right and they're self-righteous. It's going to tick them off. They're going to get mad because they know what you're preaching is the truth by the Holy Ghost, but they just don't want to admit it. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Holy Ghost. Glory to God. There are those who want to sit in high positions in the church to make other people look low. James 2 and 2. I ain't got time to read all this for the sake of the battery on this phone. I got to go up the road and charge the phone. Thank you, Jesus. But uh, glory, hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Power is supposed to be on very soon. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Glory to God. But there are people who sit in high position. <coughs> there are people that sit in high positions to make other people feel low. Thank you, Jesus. James 2 and 2. And Luke 16, 21 about the rich man and Lazarus. The rich man. Now you see in James 2 and 2 he said that if you invite a rich looking man in the church to sit down with you and have dinner, but you tell the poor man, sit here under my foot 
or stand over there in the corner and eat or sit on the floor because you're a lower class citizen than I am in ministry, then you have spoke evil. You've done evil in the sight of God. We're supposed to treat each other all the same in the eyes of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Luke 16, 21, Dives and Lazarus. Dives was the rich man and he died and was buried, but Lazarus died and was carried away by the angels. They didn't even bother burying the dude that died. They did not bother burying Lazarus. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Hallelujah. But then there is God who sits high and looks low, who says, Come up higher. His heavens are his throne, and the earth is his footstool. Hey, Sister Mickey. He says, Come up higher. Isaiah 66 and 1. Isaiah 40, 25. Thank you, Jesus. But notice he says, he invites you to sit with him in heavenly places. Ephesians 2 and 6. And Psalms 1, 10 and 1. Psalms 1, 10 and 1. It says, the heavens are my throne and the earth is my footstool. Wait, 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 wait. Psalms 1, 10 and 1 says this. My Lord said to his Lord, Sit next to me till I make your enemies your footstool. Now, I know this was a prophecy concerning Yeshua Christ Jesus, Yeshua Messiah, Yeshua Hamashiach. But it's also concerning us too because we are seated with Him in heavenly places. Far above every principality and power. Ephesians 1.21, He is seated. Far above every principality and power. But Ephesians 2 and 6, we are seated with Him in heavenly places, far above every principality and power. Thank you, Jesus. You was made to sit at the Master's table, friends. Thank you, Jesus. And not at the pig pen of life. You were not made to sit at the pig pen of sin. You were made to sit at the master's table. I'll say that again. You were not made to sit at the pig pen of sin. You were made to sit at the master's table. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Lord, I love you. Matthew 15, 27 talks about the Seraphonician woman. And she needed a miracle. And Jesus said, Woman, it's not right to give that which belonged to the children to dogs. The word dogs in Hebrew means yapping puppy. She said, True, O Lord. I know I'm a dog, but even dogs deserve crumbs that fall from the master's table. Now in the book of Moses, two things now. In the laws of Moses, if a woman was a prostitute, she was called a dog. But also, if she was a Gentile, she was called a dog. So there's two positions of what she could have been besides just being a Gentile. I believe it's possible she might have even been a, a prostitute. Possible. But that's just my interpretation of that. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Glory to God. She didn't want everything... God had to offer. She just wanted what they wouldn't pick it up from the master's table. They said they said that they wanted to sit at the master's table. But they didn't want to pick nothing up. She said, I don't want all. I just want what they're not eating. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Holy Ghost. Glory to God. I just want to pick up what they're not eating. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Glory to God. See, there are those who sit at the Master's table and yet they still are not satisfied with the life that God's given them. 
they sit at the master's table and wonder what kind of life they could have. Even if they go away, what kind of life their life would bring for them. Matthew 22 and 14. He invites you to come to the table, to the wedding banquet. Thank you, Jesus. He invites you to come and die. Revelation 3.20, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hears my voice, I will come into him and dine with him and him with me. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Glory. Hallelujah. Remember, when it came to the master's table, not even Judas could be satisfied involving his own life. You know, he wanted to live his own life and still live with God. Can't do it. You've got to surrender your will, your emotions, your life. You've got to surrender to the Lord. You can't live for yourself and live for God too. Einstein said one time that Doing the same thing over and over and over and expecting different results is the, the right definition of insanity. There are habitual sinners <clears throat> who keep coming to the master's table. Oh God, I fell, but I repent. I'm going to get back up and do it again. Not I'm going to get up and do something different and expect to do better, but I'm going to purposely fall back again into that sin I know you'll forgive me. That's habitual sinning, but it's also a very dangerous sinning lifestyle, okay? I'm telling you, you cannot be comfortable sitting in the sin you're in and expect to be all right with God. You've got to have a life sold out for Jesus. If you're lost or backslid, pray this prayer with me. Dear Jesus, I repent of my sins. I come to you a sinner. I believe you died on the cross that God the Father raised you from the dead and I am saved in the name of Jesus. Lord, fill me with your spirit that I might make heaven my home. I receive you now into myself. In Jesus' name. I hear you knocking. And Lord, I'm letting you come in. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. I hear you knocking, Lord. I'm letting you come in. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord. Glory. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. I like doing this video outside. I think the next video I'm going to do is going to be out, out on the front porch, too. Thank you, I like it. Thank you, Jesus. Whoo, hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. Glory. Hallelujah. Well, glory, glory, hallelujah, since I laid my burden down, I've been feeling so much better since I laid my burden down. Thank you, Holy Ghost, glory, hallelujah. If you're sick in your body, I curse every devil of sickness. I command it to loose you and let you go free. Every symptom, every sickness, go by the power of the Holy Ghost. Every symptom be broken off of your life. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, every symptom I charge you by Christ, go in Jesus' name. Right now, thank you, Holy Ghost. By the stripes of Jesus, you are healed in Jesus' name. And now, in the name of Jesus, I command every addiction to receive an eviction by holy conviction. In Jesus' name, every addiction, every bondage in the mind, in the spirit, soul, and body be broken by the power of the Holy Ghost of God in Jesus' name. Right now, every symptom, every sickness, every bondage, every darkness be gone in the name of Jesus by the power of the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name, I love you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Ghost. What an awesome message this morning. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Glory. Hallelujah. If you've never been baptized in the Holy Ghost and fire, Jesus is the baptizer in the Holy Ghost and fire. He is. He really is. He's the baptizer in the Holy Ghost and fire. And out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. Do it now, Lord. Rasharabaka sararoboshaya. Rakasharabaka tararoboshaya. 
Raba karamba ndaleka baba saya. Rema leleke de bosala de nemo saya. Oh, I see the heavens opening right now. I see God doing new things in people's life. Lord, let the rivers flow. Fire. Watch the water the word. In Jesus' name, bless you, Holy Ghost. Fire. 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 Bless you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Bless you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. Glory. Hallelujah. Bless you, Holy Ghost in heaven, Lord. I love you, Jesus. Ooh, I feel the Holy Ghost power. Thank you, Jesus. For those of you who desire to give, we now have we now have PayPal. The link will be at the top of the video for those on Facebook, the bottom of the video for those on YouTube. Your love gifts, Lord, your smile keep helping me bring the gospel of Jesus Christ around the world, not just here, but abroad as well. If you would like to write to me, let me know what God has done for you. Kid Henry, K-I-D-D-H-E-N-R-Y-617 at gmail.com. I want to celebrate with you in the name of Yeshua, Jesus Messiah. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. Glory. Hallelujah. Well, 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 hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Thank you for tuning in to H.R. Revivals. It's always the hour for revival. I'm your brother in the Lord, brother H.R. It's always the hour for revival. Hallelujah. I'll see you in the next meeting. And I'm your brother in the Lord, brother H.R. I'll see you in the next meeting and in the air in heaven. I love you. God bless. Bye-bye.